I'm Chef Julia Dunaway and I'm moving outside today to make some butternut squash soup. And one of the reasons I thought this would be a great thing to cook outside is because I'm going to start with some herbs from the herb garden. Starting with some sage. I'm just going to snip off a little bit. I don't need too much. And I've got several other things to collect as I make my way back to my cooking table eventually. So right now I'm going to get some parsley. And I have a garden tower, which has been going on since early spring. Set this down for a second. And I have a lot of parsley that somehow managed to survive the hot Texas summer, which I find incredible because usually it dies, but we've had a really wet summer this year. So the parsley managed to live. So I picked a little bit of that. And you can see I have a lot of peppers growing, but since this is not really Tex-Mex, we're not going to be using a lot of hot peppers. But I do have um, Fresno chili. So I have these beautiful Fresno chilies. And something about these, they're not that spicy. They, I, they're, they're more mellow than a spicy serrano or jalapeno. So I'm going to use those in my squash soup. And then we're going to head over to the big garden. And last but not least, I'm going to pick some Cajun bell peppers. So Cajun bell peppers, they don't look, they're not as big as regular bell peppers. They're, they're on the smaller side and they're a little spicy, but not really badly spicy. They're not like hot peppers. And they're, I can get some that are still gold. I can get the, the darker red ones. I think I'll get a combination of the green, gold, and red. I don't want too many. So that's about it um, for, the, for the ingredients that are going to go into the butternut squash soup from the herb garden. So now what I'm going to do is head back to my cooking spot over here under the tree in the shade and start making the soup. Okay, I'm ready to make the soup and I've already got a little bit of a head start because a little while ago I took my butternut squash, started out looking like this, organic, I didn't grow this, but I have grown it. And what I did with this, I roasted it in a 400 degree oven. It took me about 45 minutes to get it all nice and roasted. And I started it cut side down, so it was flipped over when I made it in the oven. And then how I knew it was done was I had a toothpick. And I poked it with a toothpick, and when the toothpick went through, I knew it was done. Because you don't want to have your squash still kind of raw because we want this to be a fairly quick soup to make so we want it cooked and roasted all the way I didn't use any oil nothing it's just parchment paper hot oven it roasts up beautifully our other ingredients are going to be what we just picked from the garden I have some Cajun bell peppers sage I had picked some thyme already fresh thyme Fresno chili and some parsley so we'll be using these eventually and then also we're gonna start with some garlic and shallot. So I'm gonna use one of these shallots that are pretty big size shallot. And I'm gonna use some of this garlic. I love this garlic. It came all the way here from Kentucky. My friend Julia Buttermore is from Kentucky and she was recently there and some friends of hers gave her this gigantic bag of garlic and she brought it to me and I thought it was like a treasure. I mean, people get excited about certain things, but I get excited about homegrown garlic, something I have not grown before, but the taste of this garlic is just completely special and different. It's so mellow. I just can't say enough good things about it. So I'm gonna start with the shallot. I've got my pan heating up over here, kind of on medium high heat. And the shallot, it's like two shallots in one, and that's what I want, are two shallots. And I've got to get the peel off of here. And then I'll start chopping it up. It's kind of like peeling garlic, but not as easy because it's a little on the tougher side. And then what I'm going to be doing is all of my scraps, peels and everything, I keep in my compost collector. And I have a compost bin over there by my garden and I collect all my kitchen scraps. And this, I keep this in my kitchen normally. And then I run it out to the compost bin regularly and then um, it creates this great fertilizer for the garden made from kitchen scraps. So it's really great to use compost. And I really wasn't sold on it 
in the past because it's kind of a hassle to have to remember what to do with things and not just toss them in the garbage. So I, I wasn't really sold on it. Well, this spring I had a bunch of compost from last year sitting out here in the garden in my, I have one of those uh, tumbler type compost bins. Still got a little peel on this one. And I used the compost in my vegetable garden and it made the best fertilizer. And everything I used, everything I made in that garden bed with my homegrown compost, it turned out great. It made a huge difference. So then I thought, well, I guess I'll have to keep up with the compost because it did make a big difference. So I'm just chopping these shallots, kind of small. I'd call them almost minced. The nice thing about shallots is they have real thin layers. So unlike onions, when you chop them, they automatically chop into small pieces, which I really like. And they have a little bit more mellow taste than onions, I think. But it's a different taste. It's not like eating onion. So I try to use them when I can. But you, if you didn't want to use shallots in this dish, you could use just regular old yellow onions. But I'm going to get these shallots in my pan and then get some garlic in there. Very basic recipe. It doesn't have to be a fancy recipe because look at this beautiful squash. The squash, the butternut squash is the star of the show. This time of year, squash is plentiful. It's not as expensive as other times of the year. I'm going to use three garlic cloves. And um, it, it's just a good time. It's seasonal. It's a good time to get it. It tastes great. And of course, it's healthy. <laughs> All these colorful vegetables, colorful squashes. Okay, and I'm just kind of smashing my garlic to make this is easier to peel than those shallots were. So I've got my garlic peeled pretty quickly. I'm gonna get these three cloves of garlic in my soup. And if you like garlic, you can use more. If you don't like garlic, you can use less or you can skip the garlic. You don't have to put garlic in there. I kind of like it, especially this uh, fresh garden garlic is so mellow and flavorful that it's not like the store-bought garlic that who knows how long it's been sitting there in the grocery store and it kind of has lost any freshness and it's not that good. I can tell my pan is a little hot, so I'm gonna hit it with a little stock because I don't want my shallots to burn. So when you're not using oil, things can heat up pretty fast. And as soon as it starts to develop the brown, I wanna, oh, that smells so good. I want to be sure and turn it down so it doesn't burn. So I'm gonna start throwing in some of my fresh herbs too. I've got my thyme, always, uh, peel the little thyme leaves off the stems because thyme stems are like pieces of wood. If you ever got one in your soup and tried to eat it, you know what I'm talking about. And this garden thyme is pretty tender, so I don't think it's as bad as what I've seen. It's not, uh, it's not on huge woody stalks, so it's, it's pretty safe to put some of the tender stalks in there. So about a teaspoon of fresh thyme. Probably need a little bit more than that. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in. And then sage. I'm only gonna use, let's say, three sage leaves. I find that sage is pretty strong. Strong meaning you can really taste it. So I don't really like to use a lot of it in my dish because I'm gonna have to add a little more stock. Let this kind of cook down. I don't want to add a lot of sage to me because it has a very distinctive, strong taste. So I'm going to mince the sage. If you really love sage, you can use more. Now, if you don't have fresh sage, you can use about a half a teaspoon, a little bit more if you really like sage, of dry sage, the kind that you get in the, the spice jar, rub sage or whatever different names for it. Okay, so I have the sage. I'll put a little parsley in here now and we'll save some for garnish. <laughs> Hope it doesn't blow away. <laughs> I can hear that wind, but the breeze sure feels good. 
Okay, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this parsley in, grab it before it blows away. <laughs> and I've almost forgot my Cajun bell peppers. So they need to go in here too. I'm gonna use four. They're so cute. They look like bell peppers, but they're tiny. They're just little things and they're not, they're not super spicy. I, I say that. I'll eat things and people, and I'll tell people, oh, this isn't spicy at all. And then they'll eat them and their face will change and they'll say, this is spicy. So to me, it's not very spicy, but to somebody else it might be. So how do you know if something is gonna be spicy? Well, you don't know until you taste it, right? So I usually just take a piece of whatever it is and pop it in my mouth and taste it. But you have to be careful because if that thing that you're tasting is a habanero pepper, for example, and you pop a piece of it in your mouth, it may be so hot that you can't tolerate it. And it might be kind of an unpleasant experience. So before you pop a big piece of a pepper in your mouth, uh, be advised it's better to test a small bite of pepper if you're gonna taste pepper. All right, so here it's, I gotta have a little extra stock in here because it was kind of starting to almost singe my tender little shallots. So I got the heat going. Now I've gotta get the butternut squash in here. So the easiest way to do that is just to cut it out of the skin with my knife. And that won't take that long. It's very soft. I'm not gonna use the peel. You could actually eat the peelings of butternut squash. Some people just eat them skin and all, but that's kind of not the way I like them. I like to peel the skin off. So I'm gonna do that. And we're gonna eventually blend this together with the Vitamix blender. So it's all gonna get blended up. So if a little bit of skin gets in there, it's not the end of the world. So it's nice and tender. I'm tempted to eat it before I even make the soup, but I won't. And then what I'm gonna do next is as soon as I get all the squash in the pan, I'm gonna add the broth. So, I'll let the, what I'm putting in there is cooking now. See if I can get this off quicker. And we only need to cook this for about 30 minutes. Oops, I forgot this piece right here. Because it's already been cooked, so we don't really need to cook it for a long time, but we simmer it to get the flavor developed. And then once we've done that, then you have your choice of how you're going to puree it into a, and butternut squash soup is usually a pureed soup. So we have different choices on how we're gonna puree it. We can do it with a Vitamix blender, which I love because it's a high speed, powerful blender and it works really well. And so I tend to use it for most things. <clears throat> but you can also use uh, an immersion blender. So some people call that a stick blender. It's really an immersion blender. And you put the blender in the soup instead of take the soup out and put it in the blender. And those work really well too. However, the problem with the immersion blender sometimes is that it will scratch your pot. <laughs> so technically, when you buy your immersion blender, they sell you a little plastic container. It's like a, a plastic cylinder. And they tell you, okay, well, you know, when you're using your immersion blender, put it in this cup and then put the blender down into this plastic container. And then I think, well, if you're gonna go through all that trouble, just use a blender. If you have to remove your soup from wherever it's at, you might as well use a blender. So that's why I just use the blender. All right, it's coming right along, almost done. A little bit left. And then we'll be adding the stock. Uh, I've made lots of different versions of butternut squash soup and one that I used to make a lot, I haven't made in a while, but I've really enjoyed was one that I had in Santa Fe and it was a like a southwestern green chili type of uh, butternut squash soup. It had some cumin and green chili peppers and you know the taste of the southwest 
and I, I made that so many times and loved that soup. Cilantro and jalapenos, it was really spicy and very assertive. That was a great soup. But this one is more, um, it's not really Southwestern. It's not really uh, Mediterranean. It's just got a little bit of combination of just what's available in my garden. All right, we're down to the last little piece and then we'll get it cooking. So final piece, this one is so bright orange. You can't beat the colors of nature. And especially after it's been caramelized a little bit in the oven, got that nice little brown twinge, tinge to it. Okay, and you see it's starting to bubble away. I need to hurry up and get my stock in there. All right, got it. Now, we're gonna pour the six cups of vegetable stock in here. This vegetable stock is homemade, just made from carrot, celery, and onions. I do put uh, green lentils in my stock because that gives it a little extra richness, a little garlic, parsley, uh, bring it to a boil, let it simmer for just about 30 minutes. And then you have uh, strain it really well and you have delicious homemade stock with no sodium. Of course, you can buy low sodium stock you know, from the grocery store, but sometimes low sodium stock has some odd tasting ingredients in it, like fruit. <laughs> they'll put, uh, in, be, because the sodium's reduced, they'll have things in there like pears or just odd things that have a strange taste to me in stock. So this is gonna come to a boil. It's getting there. And we're gonna just let it simmer for 30 minutes and let the flavors develop. And once that happens, we will then start pureeing our soup and go on to the final step. We're going to do some different kinds of garnish. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on this so it'll have, we'll be able to cook. We're gonna come back in a minute and we're going to puree our soup and then we're gonna garnish it with some different things such as cashew cream and some fresh herbs. So be right back. Well, the squash, butternut squash soup has been cooking for a nice 30 minutes on simmer and all the squash is totally tender and fragrant and smells wonderful. And I've put half of it in the blender because you don't want to overfill your blender jar because trust me, if you do with something hot, it seems like hot stuff expands in the blender and it will shoot up and make a huge mess and it can be dangerous. So, you know, less is better. And so we're just gonna let it blend. I st always started on low. And then move it up so that it's this half into my bowl and you can see it's perfectly smooth nicely pureed and I have my handy Vitamix blender tool that scrapes the side of the blender and gets everything out which is very nice and handy because things kind of get stuck under the blade you ever notice that all right so got that out and now I've got to do the exact same thing to the other half of the soup pour it in here, clean out my pan and get it back in here so I can get it to the right temperature that I want it. So I'm on to do the next half. All right, well, the soup is all nice and blended and velvety and silky smooth and it's still hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate it right up. Got this big white bowl. Want the color to stand out. Probably a bigger serving than I would normally eat, but that's all right. This is a dinner size portion. So now I'm going to put some of my garnishes on there. I'm gonna start with a little bit of this cashew crema, which I could 
like swirl around on the soup, make a nice little pattern. Put a little bit more on there. And it's just cashews that have been soaked for about 30 minutes, blended in the blender with a little water. So a cup of cashews, half cup of water, blended till it's very smooth. And that's cashew cream, cashew crema. I've taken the sage, the parsley, and the thyme, and I've minced it up really small to create this really nice herb garnish. A little goes a long way. Then I have my Fresno chili that we picked from the garden, and I've diced it up or minced it up really small. And remember, it's not a real spicy one. Last but not least, I have some roasted pepita pumpkin seeds that I'm going to put on top. So there you go. There is our butternut squash soup made creamy with a little cashew cream with some fresh herbs that we picked in the garden, a little Fresno chili, and some roasted pumpkin seeds. And if we wanted to spice it up, some people like it hot. You could put some of this habanero sauce on it. But if you like it mild, just leave it this way. Put some freshly ground pepper, a little sea salt on there. I didn't put any salt in it. Doesn't really need it. There was some salt in the vegetable broth. And that's the nice dish for fall, the butternut squash soup. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you subscribe to my channel and watch my videos on whole food, plant-based, no oil cooking. Thanks again. Bye-bye.